Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Joelle and in today's video I want to share with you um, my testimony. I guess you could say this is my case for Christ. And I want to start off by saying I don't I don't really particularly love talking about myself. But I know that stories can really touch people and bring people to a more open heart and bring down their barriers when they can see where you're coming from or they can see an experience or they can feel something through your story. And so with that said, I would just like to say a little prayer before I start. Lord God, the creator of heaven and earth, Thank you for my life and everything. Thank you for every single person who's watching this video right now. God, I pray that in the short amount of time that I have, that you allow me to say everything that needs to be said, that you allow me to articulate the words in a way that can reach people and speak truth to them. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to tell my story in a way that I don't speak specifically about anybody. Because I don't want anybody who's watching this to feel any which way because of me. I have forgiven. I have moved on. I am born again. And so my purpose here is not to shine light on other people's negativity or mistakes or whatever my purpose is just my purpose for this video is to shine light on Christ so I'm going to tell the story in a way that doesn't really give the details but just gives you a sense of where I was and who I was when Christ found me or when Christ introduced himself to me and so I'll just say I grew up in a broken home and I know a lot of people can relate and the pain that comes from that is unspeakable. I've seen things that I don't wish anybody to see. I've lived things that I don't wish anybody to live. And um by the time I was age 14, from 14 to the age of 16, I constantly thought about taking my own life. Life to me was black. There was no color there. It was dark. It was depressing. I was such a loner that I couldn't bring myself to even look at somebody or have a conversation with somebody. I was deathly afraid of people from what I've experienced in my life. I was not only afraid of people, but I hated people. I hated people because I thought they were all bad. I hated life. And in my mind, God did not exist. But if he did, I hated him too. Because how could he let bad things happen to people, to anybody? How can bad things happen? How can he let these horrible, awful things happen. And I didn't even know that I hated God. I didn't even know that I hated the idea of God because I never even knew about his existence. Nobody's ever spoke to me about it before. However, at that time when I was 16 years old, I was living in a farm. And I was, drive I was riding on a school bus to and from school because it was so far away. It was like an hour drive. And there was this one kid, and I'm not going to say his name for privacy purposes because I don't know if you'd want me to, but there was this guy on my bus and he'd be preaching the word of God and he'd be preaching to all the kids on the bus. And it made me so angry. He annoyed me so much. Every fiber of my being, when he was speaking, was shaking and vibrating with anger. Because I'm like, there's no way. 
There's no way, and I hate your God. I hate God because how how could that even be? How could you be saying all these nice things about God when he does all these bad things or allows all these bad things? It got to the point where it made me so angry that I started bringing an MP3 player to school with me just so I can tune him out on the bus because I hated listening to it. And, uh, but one day, as I was flipping a song, I heard the word Jesus in my head so loudly and so clearly as if it was coming from inside my head or as if I wasn't even wearing earphones, earbuds. It was so audible, so crystal clear. And then I take off my earbuds, which was a miracle in itself because I would never in a million years go and try to put myself in any social situation whatsoever. But I took off my earbuds. I turned my whole body to look at him. This in itself was a miracle. And I often say that when I'm telling this, when I'm, and when I'm telling the story, I often say that it felt like it wasn't even me doing it. Like there was a power beyond me doing that for me. And I turned to look at him and his face was shining, was glowing as if he wasn't even from this world. It was like I was looking at an angel. And instead, and, and he turned his direction from talking to all the children there to looking just at me, talking directly to me about Jesus and everything that he did for me. I didn't say a word, but he spoke to me from the time that I looked at him until the time I got home. He never took his eyes off of me. When I got home, I still didn't say anything, I just walked off the bus. I waited for the bus to pass and I fell to my knees and I cried. And I cried and I cried for what felt like eternity. And when I looked up for the first time in my whole life, I seen the trees, I seen birds, I seen the grass, I seen the sky I seen color and I felt hope from that day on I never thought about taking my life ever again I really felt saved and the funny thing about this is that for a month prior to this experience I would skip school, skip my classes to sit in the cafeteria and doodle all over all of my binders, my books, the word saved, 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 saved. It consumed me. I had no idea what I was writing or why I was writing it. That day I knew. God, he never let go of me. A girl who was an alcoholic, on drugs, even living on the street sometimes, or once, I did once. Living home to home. A girl with so much hatred and fear, just a sinner, just somebody who it felt like everybody had forgotten. And, um, If God can do that for me, he can do that for anybody. God gave me a new life. Since that day, my life never, ever went back to where it was. That same darkness, that same depression, 
I'm not gonna say it was always easy, because I did go off the path to explore other religions, to explore the new age, and I was very heavily invested in that. But I know now that God let me, allowed me to walk off the path, to explore those things, to show me that nothing can fill me and satisfy me like him. Nothing has been able to fill me, satisfy me like God. Nothing. It was always empty promises, short periods of happiness, just these short bursts of pleasantness, followed by disappointment. But with God, it's a consistent pleasantness, a consistent growing. He builds your faith. You come to him with a small mustard seed faith. You come to him with a tiny little faith, like a mustard seed. This is one of the parables that Jesus told, the mustard seed parable. And I suggest if you don't know what that is, you go look it up. But you come to God with a tiny little faith. And you plant that seed. And you water it. The sun shines on it. The soil nurtures it. And it grows into this strong tree with deep roots. This is like your faith. When you come to God, he will nurture you and provide the light and all the elements needed to make you grow. There's, there's not a day that goes by that he doesn't completely just blow my mind with how loving he is. And that thought that I used to have, how can God, if he's all great and all loving, allow bad things to happen? That answer, that question was answered for me. And now I understand. Whatever questions that you have for God, I know he can answer them for you. So if you don't mind, I would like to pray for you. If you don't know Christ and you want to, or if you do know Christ and you want to know him more. Lord God, creator of heaven and earth, I lift up every child of yours that is watching this video right now. And I pray, Lord God, that you would give them clear answers to their questions about you. That you would deepen their knowledge of you. That you would come into their heart, Lord God, and reveal yourself to them. Let them know, without a shadow of a doubt, that you are God. That you are who you say you are. And that you are capable of all things. And that no matter where they are in life, no matter what they've done, that you love them. Let them know how loved they are. Let them experience how deep how wide, how consuming your love is. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. My brothers and sisters, thank you for taking the time to listen to this story. Thank you for giving me your time and your attention. And I pray that you have a wonderful day, amazing day.